Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. I will title today's segment, State of Affairs. Once again, I will title today's segment, State of Affairs. Today is October the 6th, what they call 2024. <clears throat> and... I would just like to speak to you for a few minutes pertaining to the state of affairs and the things that I'm seeing is taking part here in America and across the earth. I hope that those of you that are in the, uh, the Southeast, <clears throat> that you are well and that you are safe and you're taking all of the precautions by which to endure the, the current storm and the one that's to come. I'm hearing that there's one that's now brewing that may possibly come through Florida. So certainly take all necessary precautions. Of course, you're to place your trust in the most high. However, you are also to ensure that you do your part, trying to be prepared that you and your family can best endure a natural disaster. So <clears throat> as for me, when the storm hit last weekend, I was actually asleep. I was pretty much pulling a Jonah almost. Uh, the winds were terrible. It was Friday. I was actually off of work, so I decided to get some sleep, and I was indeed sleeping through that thing. And then suddenly I heard a loud bang on the side of my house. Sound like a bus hit my house. And I woke up, not knowing exactly what had happened. And my wife had yelled and said the tree fell on the house. She thought the roof had blown off. Uh, but one of my neighbor's tree had fallen up against my house. But it's a two-story house and the tree is, is a tall tree, so the height of the house pretty much minimized the damage. They came and cut the tree and then the whole limb fell down and landed on my AC unit. So that had to be corrected as well. So that's about the extent of the damage that was done to my home. Other than that, everything is fine and everything has been restored to normal. So I have been blessed in that regard. Many other people have not been so lucky as it pertains to the damages that has been withstood from the rains <clears throat> as well as from the flood and from the fallen trees and debris and power lines and things of the like. Some people across the, north, uh, across the southeast have not uh, had their power restored as of yet. So many people are still uh, struggling as far as to have the food, the water and the necessities to uh to sustain life day to day. So uh, my heart goes out to them and I hope that uh, electricity is restored to them shortly, along with all the necessities of life by which they can return to a state of normalcy. Now, let me get straight to the holy days. As you know, the children of Israel, we are commanded to keep holy days. We don't keep holidays. I've just been into the, uh, the local Home Depot and the local Lowe's because I was caught flat-footed out in the flat when this, this, uh, this hurricane had hit South Carolina. I did not have a grill. I did not have a chainsaw. And I do not have a uh, generator. So I will go out later on this evening and we'll pick up a generator and a chainsaw. Those are the two things. I've got everything else that I needed. Those are the only two things that I needed or survival kit necessary should something like this ever happen again. Uh, many people have lost the food that was in their refrigerator as well because if you did not have a generator, chances are all of your frozen items they were spoiled. They had to be thrown out. So this is quite a financial blow for many. Uh, and it's also a psychological one. Uh, it's very tough for some people to recover from some of these things, whether it be financially, emotionally, etc. So, uh, but with time, I trust that we will get through it. So ensure that you're prepared. If you do not have a generator, it's a good idea to get one. Uh, certainly, I bought some canisters, some large, I don't know how many gallons they are, that I may put gas, uh, have some gas stored. That way, should I have to use the generator, I'll be able to do that. Uh, and if I have to cook something, I would have a gas grill. So do all that is necessary to prepare yourself should something like this ever happen again. Now, back to these holy days. I've just left home Depot and Lowe's, and they have all types of foolishness going on in there. Uh, 
You have the Halloween costumes. You know, that nonsense is big among the heathen. And we have participated in this foolishness as well. And the Christmas decorations are already up. They're selling the trees and the whole nine. I had to take a photo of that thing and send it to Brother Benias. And I told him, look at this foolishness. So, uh, you know, we clearly, as the House of Israel, understand that we're not to take part in these things. So let's deal with the holy days as it pertains to the seventh month. Blowing of trumpets. I kept that on the first. First of October, which is the seventh month. Day of Atonement, which is October the 10th. And on the Day of Atonement, no food, no drink. It's a dry fast. <clears throat> we are to afflict our souls. That simply means to fast. So I will be fasting all of that day. And there's also there's no work on that day as well. The first day of Feast of Tabernacles, October the 15th. And the last day of Feast of Tabernacles, October the 22nd. Days that I do not work at all. So <clears throat> those are the four holy days that we have this month. And you can read up on those. That way you may become abreast on them. That way you may make a decision on whether you think you ought to keep them or not. Now, some people are keeping these days on something. They're keeping these holy days on other days. Once again, I'm not sitting here pontificating with anyone about when they keep what. The goal is, is that you know that it should be kept and you are to commemorate that when it's given to us and it's reiterated to us, every man will know clearly. And then if you want to buck that, then there's a problem. But right now, as long as we clearly understand that these days are to be kept, I'm fine with that in regards to what day someone may decide to keep it. So I'm not going to argue about that. But those are our four holy days that we have this month. Now, uh, I was asked about Brother Dave. <clears throat> uh, every now and then I would sit down with the brothers that's in the UK. <clears throat> and there's a channel uh, titled uh, <clears throat> Israelites Assembles. Uh, it was Brother, Brother Hanks. Uh, it was his brainchild. He reached out to me and said, hey, Brother Lee, I would like to... Uh, I would like you to be a part of this. And I said, well, sure, get it together, I'll be there. And so we have sat down and had some very good discussions over the years. Uh, now, Brother Hank is currently in Cuba, and when he returns mid-month, I've just spoke to him today, uh, then we will resume those talks. Uh, some people have benefited from listening to us sit down and have these discussions. I think it's a very good thing and an encouraging thing to see the men of Israel sit down and have a conversation that's solely about the people and and us as grown men showing both our young men, our old men, as well as our women and the youth, that some grown men can sit down without the use of profanities and we can may not see eye to eye on everything, but we can be respectful and there is no profanities being thrown or no insults or anything of the sort that we will sit there and magnify the most high's law and that we will not do anything to weaken the hearts and minds of the people. That has always been the main thing with me as I sat with those gentlemen on that panel, that if we were going to sit there and argue and if there was going to be anything that was going to cause the people's heart to faint, that I didn't want to be a part of it. So. We are still doing that. We haven't done it in quite some time because Brother Hank is on business down in the Caribbean. So when he returns, we'll sit down and we'll have our normal discussions. And you can always tune in to kind of to kind of hear exactly what we're speaking of. As it pertains to Britain, we know certainly over the last few weeks, there's been an issue as far as the children of Israel uh, in Britain. Uh, they've come under a lot of harassment and unfair treatment. Nothing new. We experience that here. We experience that there. We experience that that type of treatment everywhere. So this is nothing new. I was just hoping that I, I never see Brother Dave being chased by the heathen on BBC on his one-wheel bicycle 
or his one wheel motorbike or whatever that thing is called, that, that unicycle or whatever it is he rides. I just hope that I never ever look, look on the BBC and see him rolling down the street with a bunch of heathens chasing him down or anything of the sort. Uh, but on all seriousness, uh, these <clears throat> the, the increase of the pressures upon our people, uh, we will see more and more of it. For as the Most High put his pressures upon these nations, that will trickle down to us because we know how this game is played. Once the heathen find themselves in dire straits, they will always look for someone to blame. And the blame has always fallen squarely on the shoulders of the children of Israel. And regardless of whose fault it is, we're always the ones that's going to take the brunt of the blow. So we are to be mindful. We are in a combat zone that our women and our children are made aware of exactly where they are, who they are, and who they are around. That way they do not drop their guard thinking that everything is okay and find themselves harmed. I was unable to speak to, uh, I may just have to reach out to Brother Dave because he's him or Brother Delvin, because they're currently in the UK. Brother Hank is not able to give me any updates on precisely what is going on in England because he's not there. Uh, but I'm certain that uh, Brother Dave and Brother Delvin, that Brother Delvin may even be in Turkey right now. I have no idea. But Brother Dave certainly is probably, probably still in England. He may be in the Caribbean as well. Uh, but if he is, then he will be able to give me and give us a clear understanding of exactly what is taking place in England. But from the clips that I have seen, it seems as though uh, that our people are being given a hard time. But they've always been. Many of them are still <clears throat> in a state of shock of their treatment, as we will find some Israelites here will find themselves on the TV screen with a microphone in their face, and they're expressing how shocked they are of the unrighteous treatment that they are receiving. And when I see Israelites who are <clears throat> uttering such words, I often ask myself, where have you been? This has been happening all along. It shocks you only because it is happening to you. But you have looked on the TV screen and you have seen this being done to our brothers all across this nation. But many of us refuse to believe what our eyes see. And many of us are speaking there is no racism and a whole bunch of other nonsense. And as soon as they find themselves in a jam, now all of a sudden they're changing their tune. <clears throat> so <clears throat> when we see an Israelite being hurt or being treated unfairly, whether it's across the street or across the nation, he is our brother. And we are to speak up on his behalf because it's just a matter of time before it's your turn. And we are to be mindful of that. <clears throat> so hopefully we'll get a... Uh, We'll get an update on exactly what's going on in Britain. Now, as it pertains to the fanners and the caterpillars, who are pretty much these migrants coming into all of these nations, going into the European nations as well as coming into America, and they are sent here to empty the place, to drain it, drain its resources, and pretty much to cause dissension in the place. Now, I have a friend of mine who actually has a courier service, a courier company, and he's actually going to sell his van and he's going to come out of the business altogether because the Russians and other immigrants, other migrants are actually running these loads for next to nothing per mile. <clears throat> and he is unable to compete with that. Many of the well-established companies are not able to compete with that. So we are seeing where there's a disruption in the trucking and transportation industry in that sector because many of the immigrants are undercutting with their bids and doing these loads for next to nothing. From where they come from, that's a great deal. But if you're actually living in America and you're accustomed to this standard of living, the prices that the migrants from Russia and parts of Belarus and all these other Eastern European bloc nations, the prices that they are running the loads for, the average American company, or let alone the average small businessman who may have three or four vans, he is unable to compete with that. So we're seeing where 
There's a disruption in that sector, and I'm certain it is not the only one. Uh, you may be able to uh, comment if the illegal immigration <clears throat> is affecting your sector of business. And I'm certain to some degree, one way or another, that it is. So the fanners are doing exactly what they were supposed to do. They're coming in here and disrupting things and causing other people and other businesses to either go bankrupt or to withdraw from the business altogether because they are undercutting prices by which their well-established companies are unable to compete. Not to mention, many of these quote-unquote major corporations and 500, Fortune 500 companies, they're hiring the illegals because they don't have to worry about paying them a fair wage and they don't have to worry about paying, covering their insurances, uh, retirement, uh, 401k of any of the sort. It's a cheap labor force. <clears throat> cheap labor force that you can pretty much get rid of at will. And so therefore, many of those from the Eastern Bloc doing these jobs, to them it's a come up. It's a step up from what they're accustomed to and from where they're from. However, it undercuts those who live here and are trying to make a living. So therefore, it's forcing many of our people out of the workforce. So if you're seeing this thing, you can make mention of it. That way, all the people may be aware of exactly what's going on as these fanners, these caterpillars come into the nation and start to drain its resources and cause havoc all over the place. Now, the sanctions. As I've discussed before, <clears throat> Sanction is a tool of war. <clears throat> Instead of a hot war via bullets, sanctions are a means of economical warfare. <clears throat> if I sanction your nation, you can't get all the necessary goods by which to function. For example, you may not be able to get cars. You may not be able to get gas. You may not be able to get medical supplies. You may not be able to get certain types of foods. You certainly can't get any weaponry. So you may not be able to get spare parts for your airplanes, for your boats, or for, or for anything of the sort. Sanctions are used to cripple a nation. It is what you would call collective punishment. When the government is not pleased with a particular ruling party or government, what the governments do, America and the European Union and the UN, the unrighteous nations, they will place sanction on a nation, sanctions. And these sanctions are primarily used for all the African nations, the black nations, places where the children of Israel dwell. <clears throat> and these sanctions are used as collective punishment against the people. <clears throat> so we see where they're trying to say that collective punishment is bad. However, these people are hypocrites. It's only bad when someone else is doing it. When they're doing it, it's not so bad. It's fair game. And their hypocrisy is being exposed for the world to see. Now, we, are, we have read about and we have heard about the sanctions on North Korea, the sanctions on Iran, the sanctions that's on Russia, etc., etc. Let me remind you, that no one on this planet is more sanctioned than the children of Israel. All of the sanctions that America is doing to other nations, it first did it to the Israelites here in America. <clears throat> Bombed them, <clears throat> denied them all types of things, wages, medical care, etc. They have done all these things, all of these sanctions that they're putting on these nations, making sure that they don't have access to certain types of goods, restriction, restricting the flow of money, throwing us in jail, etc., etc., bombing people, locking them up without due process, raiding their homes without warrants, all manner of lawless behavior, these things have been done to us and no nation, no one has stood up on our behalf. And if anyone stood up and decided that they were going to be a leader and a spokesperson 
for our people in our plight. They have done to us the same thing that the Israelis are doing to the Hamas leadership and the Hezbollah leadership. They killed them. So I will say it again. These Israelis, these Americans, these Europeans, their tactics are all the same. But before they took it to the Palestinians, these tactics were used on black people in America, throughout the Americas, and throughout the diaspora, a.k.a. the children of Israel. All that you see them doing now to the Palestinians and to the Russians and to whomever else, they first tested, a, tested it out on the children of Israel. In fact, we're still under sanctions in this nation and, on, and in all the other nations where we dwell. And this is the thing that many of us are not willing to face. We are a people under sanctions. But we have never looked at it from that perspective. I'll say once again, all the freedom fighters that are fighting for the rights of their people because their lands have been stolen, because their kids, their children have been murdered, and their rights have been stripped away. They have been wrongfully incarcerated. They have been beaten up. They have been tortured, etc. All of these things that they're doing, they have done it to the children of Israel. In Palestine, I don't know, they may have killed 40 some thousand people thus far. This is a tragedy, a tragedy, all right? It is a tragic event. However, they have murdered, slaughtered, and enslaved the children of Israel by the millions. So what the Palestinians are enduring, though it's a travesty, we have endured that and more. And no one is bringing up our plight. There's nothing by which to compare the Palestinian situation to. When you start thinking about bad things, they always want to jump to the Holocaust. That is supposed to be the worst thing happening or that has ever happened. That's what they would like you to believe. However, our people have been dealing with these atrocious acts for generations, generations. And at this point, they don't want to reference slavery. They may speak of the Palestinian situation and the furthest they would want to go is South Africa. And they almost mentioned that in passing. But it's coming a time when they're going to have to mention South Africa and they're going to have to mention what all these European nations have done to the children of Israel by scattering us throughout the four corners of the earth and enslaving us and murdering us and raping us. All of these things will have to be addressed. And yes, placing their sanctions upon us within their respective nations. So consider this for a moment. If you are Afro-Brazilian, Afro-Cuban, etc., if you are throughout the diaspora and you are one of the children of Israel, you can attest and I'm sure you have stories where when you think of the sanctions that's been placed on the Palestinians, you can take those same sanctions and put up laws by which the very nation in which you dwell have the same sanctions against you and have had it for some time. And it's still in full effect right now. All right. As it pertains to this whirlwind and the whirlwinds that the Most High is sending. Currently, they have raised the percentage rate of the credit cards. The credit cards are now 34.5%, I believe. Now, 34.5% is almost impossible for you to get out from under. So what will happen is, as America begins to feel the squeeze as a nation, this will pass on down to the people. Many of the people are already hurting financially. 
Now you add this, 34% is what you will be paying interest rate on your credit cards. What you will find is that many people will default. So there will be a default in the whole credit sector. That's going to be devastating to this place. The Most High has hit them with these winds. So now a family that's been struggling, the winds hit your house. You, have, you may be forced to use a credit card at 34% interest. It is potentially a bill that you may never be able to pay. So the long-term result of this could possibly be and more than likely will be you will default on that card. And it won't be just you, it will be many others. It will be a nationwide effect. I know of someone where I work where so many trees have fallen upon their home and around their homes. The quote that they were given to remove these trees was $20,000. Not 2000 not two hundred, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. So to have a tree removed on average, two or three trees, it might run you 5000 so it's very expensive to do the removal of all the trees and debris that's possibly on your property or possibly in your house or on top of your roof. This will financially damage many families and some may never recover from it. A lot of the families are in foreclosure. A lot of the families have been in their homes and have not made a payment in four years because of that meritorium. So there's financial trouble within the nation that's being kept on the wraps because many of the banks have not put these homes in foreclosure. They're trying to work things out with the homeowners to ensure that somehow they're able to pay. And so they're being very lenient with them because if everyone that was in the house that was not able to pay if they had to leave, you would have a bunch of vacancies and it will certainly take the housing market and the value of homes that's currently standing and it will drop tremendously. So we have got some issues going on with this squeeze. We certainly, many people probably are aware that the rent, rent in most cities, in most places, run as much or more than mortgages. Many people are unable to buy a home. The down payment is entirely too high. They do not have the savings put away by which to make that down payment. Some people may have the down payment, then may not have the credit score to qualify. So there's a bunch of variables that's boxing people out of the housing market. And if there are no houses being built, then the plumbers suffer, the lumber companies suffer, Home Depot suffers, uh, the electrician suffers, et cetera, et cetera. It's a cascading effect. So we're seeing where much of this is being brought to bear for us to see as it pertains to the hardships that this nation is beginning to face as we face these whirlwinds and the potential wars and the credit crunch. So as far as your monies, Ensure that you have a couple of thousand dollars of cash on hand. Being having having that being part of your preparatory readiness for such an event such as a hurricane or a whirlwind of some kind. Because when the power was out around this area, many of the places weren't able to take cash. Because the whole system, even when the power came up, much of the car systems were still out of whack. And so therefore, if you had cash, that was a bonus. But nowadays, most people do not carry cash. They carry their debit cards. So as an emergency precaution, it would behoove you to have some cash uh, safeguarded someplace for an event such as this. So we can certainly, uh, we can see the squeeze, we can feel the squeeze. Uh, many jobs, if they're not laying off, they're cutting hours. And so many employees 
are not getting their 40 hours as, as they should. Uh, therefore, some cuts have to be made, uh, as they would say, tightening of the belts. So it is time for us to really uh, get focused on exactly what's important. Now, there's much talk on internet, on the internet about some women who are making it plain that they don't need a man. And then you have it, conversely, you have men talking about they don't need a woman because X, Y, Z. And we have women that's speaking that they don't need a man because of X, Y, Z. Israelites, of course. I would like every woman to understand that you do need a man. And I would like every man to understand that you do need a woman. If, you, if a man didn't need a woman, the Most High would not have made a woman for a man. So if your creator thought it necessary to make a woman for you, and that you, a woman, would have the companionship of a man, you have to think about how out of order your whole mindset is for you to be a man and say that you don't need a woman. This is how you know an Israelite is out of his mind because the Most High, the creator of heaven and earth who made you, deemed it fit, saw it fit that you will have a woman as your companion and that the woman will have a man. And yet we have people that is giving a platform that all the people follow that they're actually saying, woman is saying that she don't need a man for nothing, et cetera, et cetera. And she has a bunch of cheerleaders behind her. This is the foolishness of our people. And then we have men that's saying the same thing. They don't need a woman. Oh, you need one. Because if you didn't, the Most High would not have made a woman for you as a companion. So we are to stop this foolishness. Now, how can we fix this? We can fix this by returning back onto the law, statutes, judgment, and precepts of the Most High. If we are to re reconcile ourselves back onto the Most High and His law, then He will reconcile us back onto each other. The males to the females, the father to his brother, the brother to his brother, the father to his children, the mother to her children, the husband to his wife, the wife to her husband. And this is how we become healed. So when you hear women out here talking about, I don't need a man, and you hear men out here talking about, you don't need a woman. Well, if you don't need a woman, as a man, what other choice do you have? Certainly, you're not crazy enough to be with another man. You're not going to be with an animal. What are you thinking about? These kind of things, when I hear them, is just disturbing. But this is the mindset of our people. But once we reconcile ourselves back onto the Most High, then this damage... This wound becomes healed. We're going to stop all this foolishness. Many of these women who have spoken loud and out of turn with this madness, as the hardships hit and the tree falls on the house and you need that chainsaw and you need someone to come pull that live wire off your roof or whatever the case may be, then they may understand the value of a man. You're going to need a man. If our enemies start coming against us in the many lands where we live, two women are not putting up a fight like that. It's the men that's going to fight for you. It's the men that's going to protect you. It's the men's shoulder that you're going to go behind to hide for cover. The warriors of the, of the house of Israel are its men. It's never been our women. So it's imperative that a woman not carry a man's spirit. And it's imperative that a man not have a woman's spirit. It's also imperative that a woman do not have a spirit that is anti-man. And that a man having a spirit that's anti-woman. Because to have such a spirit simply means that you're anti-yah. So we are to remember all of these things if we return on to the most highest yah the law, statute, judgments of the Most High is Yah, yeah, then simply all these effeminate behaviors that many of our men have, all this masculine behavior that many of our women have, and all this feminist type behavior that our women have trying to be anti-man, all of this nonsense goes away. The Most High made it plain how we're to fix this, but many of us have not heard it, 
and many of us refuse to believe it. So we're to turn. We cannot continue on the current path. All right, let's deal with the war in Ukraine. Now, if you listen to the mainstream media, you're hearing how the Russians are getting beat down by the Ukrainians and that NATO and America and their cohorts are dealing a deadly blow to the Russians and that the Russians are going to lose, et cetera, et cetera. Anyone that believes that Ukraine will beat the Russians is someone who believes that a midget can beat Mike Tyson in a 12 round fight. It's not going to happen. The midget might get a couple of shots in, but it's not going to it's not going to go the way of the midget. So. Though America is giving and funding the Ukrainian war. Now, keep in mind, we have disasters here, right here where I live. Many people are being denied any financial aid by FEMA. However, there's all types of money being sent to Ukraine. Keep in mind, this is a neo-Nazi regime. You have seen the way they were treating Africans when it was time to flee Ukraine on that train. These are open what you call white supremacist nations, literally. And, and this white supremacist term, I use that because it's something that's very popular. People can relate to it. But what a white supremacist is, is nothing but an unrighteous white man. That's all. <laughs> nothing more. So racism in the Book of Remembrance, I've never seen where any man or woman has ever been charged with racism. I see where they have been charged and punished for unrighteousness. So all a racist is, is nothing but an unrighteous man. And we've got them a dime a dozen. So, if you look at the alternative media, not the mainstream media, and you have many pundits that's giving you a clear understanding of exactly if you are with RT, if you're with Russia Today, and I jump there and read articles all the time, that way I can hear it from the Russians' mouth and from other forms of media. The Russians are beating the brakes off these Ukrainians. The Russians have more manpower, have more weaponry, have more land mass to cover, have all kind of time, can take their time doing what they're doing. Ukraine, on the other hand, is running out of men, running out of ammunition, and most importantly, running out of options. So the proxy war has been waged, and now Russia is sitting back wondering, well, if I'm fighting this man and you're gonna give him weapons, I'll tell you what I'll do. The man that you're fighting, I'm gonna give him some weapons. So now the Russians have armed some of the enemies of NATO and some of the enemies of America, and they don't like that. However, once again, this is the unrighteousness of these people to where it's only wrong when you do it. When I do it, it's fair game. But when you do it, woe is me. So we will see exactly how this thing will take place with Ukraine. Word in the street is the Russians are beating the brakes off them. And when it's said and done, whatever is left of Ukraine, all the terms will be dictated by the Russians. Russians are a different kind of people. Why? Russians are the only bunch of white people out here that has never murdered and enslaved the children of Israel. And that's why their position is very unique when it comes to these other white people or these other white nations. You don't have no such thing as a colony or a country where you have black people, and though all black people are not the children of Israel, I'm using that term that you may understand, there's no place where you have a bunch of black people speaking Russian with Russians with Russian names. They have never done it. They have never done it. And so it's important when you see the Most High is raising up these particular people against this place. Because these are the very few white people that have never enslaved Africans 
or have enslaved the children of Israel. I don't know of any record of it. Do you? If you do, you can certainly inform me. But I don't know of any place where there's people that look like me, named Nikolai, or have any of these other Russian names, and Vladimir, and speaking Russian, because they've been conquered and busted in the head by Russians. I don't know of anyone. So Russia is holding a very unique position as far as being one of the nation raised up for our deliverance. This is my view. So let's closely watch and see that the Russians are very serious people. They're very different. It's very hard to beat a Russian. Worse yet, it's almost impossible to beat a Russian on Russian soil. So these people can fight. They are accustomed to fighting. And so therefore, we have not seen any fights come here. I don't think we have the stomach for it. We're accustomed to going to other places and creating mayhem. It's a difference when a man comes and tears up your own house. And we have not experienced that. And that will be a very different thing to deal with psychologically. So the Russians are prepared. They've raised their armies and they have some weapons that's extremely dangerous that cannot be stopped. They have given their warnings. I don't know how many more warnings they will give before they hit, but I would like to think that NATO and some of these other European powers understand clearly that Mr. Vladimir Putin is not to be played with. I think he's made that clear, but there's always gonna be one, one guy that's gonna test this man to see exactly, to see exactly if he's bluffing. And I think there's no bluff in him. But to figure that out and to come to that realization is going to be at the expense of many lives lost. So let's continue to keep an eye on this whole Russian, Ukraine, NATO situation. NATO's putting the battery pack into these Ukrainians. This is a, once again, it's a neo-Nazi regime. And so you have this nation that's actually backing some neo-Nazis. But why should we be shocked? When they did defeat Hitler, all of their top scientists and top officers came to America to live. They gave them free passage here. So it's not like they are new to being friends to neo-Nazis. Many of them are neo-Nazis. There's some strong, strong neo-Nazi groups here. So, once again, we're not dealing with anything that's new. Nothing's new under the sun. Let's deal with these, this war in the Middle East. What we're seeing here in the Middle East is simply <clears throat> the white European who calls himself a Jew is getting beat up by the Arabs. <clears throat> that's the long and short of it. He's unable to whoop them in the asymmetrical warfare. So therefore, hey, I can't beat you this way. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll kill all of you. <clears throat> Why? Because, hey, look, you're in a resistance. This is a guerrilla group. Now, when you're dealing with guerrilla fighting, it's a totally different ball game. Fighting door to door, house to house. I mean, it's a dangerous thing to do. Uh, if I came into your home with a gun, and I don't know exactly how your house is set up and where the hiding places are. For me to come in there is just absolutely foolish. I'm at a disadvantage. More than likely, I'm going to get killed. I don't know where I'm going. You have the home advantage if I came into your house. And so therefore, this is the same thing that they're finding when they go into these enclaves. They're gonna find it in Lebanon as they found it out in Gaza. <clears throat> so this European is getting beat up by these Arabs. <clears throat> And when Europeans fight, they fight as a collective. So America's going to back them, France going to back them, Germany going to back them, and all these other white European Christian nations. This, these people murder as a collective, lie as a collective, enslave as a collective, and will double down on their wickedness. The Arab man, a.k.a. the Muslim, is the last thorn in the side of the European. He's conquered everyone else. He's conquered the native peoples of Central, South, and Latin America. 
He's conquered the Asians. Name them. China, Philippines, Japan, the European, the Spanish, and Spain is in Europe, the Spaniard is a white man. Busted Philippines over the head. The Brits, another white man, bust the Chinese man over his head, just gave him back Hong Kong not too long ago. The American white man, who was nothing but a Brit, dropped all type of bombs on the Japanese man. You think the Japanese man forgot that? Do you think the Japanese people have forgotten that? So all the other families of the earth, the European has crushed and subdued but he has a problem doing that to these Arabs of Islam. And they have been a thorn in his side. And this is where the problem lies. And these Europeans are gonna get behind these other Europeans that they put in this land to go try to subdue this Arab man of Islam. So we're gonna see the big showdown between the white Christian and the Arabs. This is what we're witnessing. Once again, they have subdued everyone but the Muslims. They have not been successful doing that. So let's see exactly how that goes. I've already read to you exactly how the Most High, what he proposed to do to this place. So what we're to see now, we're to bear witness to see if the Most High's words will certainly come to pass. And um, one that believes that it will. So the whole thing is that we're to stay vigilant because right now you're looking at those that's in Israel, the white European. That's what he is. If you dig up the bones of the ancient people of the children of Israel, none of those Israelis have any genetical identification or genetical match or link or are they related to the ancient Israelites of that land. They don't have the genetic markers for that. They know it and the earth knows it. And the earth is beginning to see exactly the peoples of the earth. The Most High is ripping the covers off of them. There's no place for them to hide. And no one is bringing that up just yet. No one is running up on Melikowski, also known as Netanyahu. No one is running up on him and asking him, hey man, uh, you, you're saying you're the people of God. How come all these prophecies that God said would happen to the people of Israel when they return onto the land, how come none of them is fitting you and the rest of you are the white people in this land? No one is asking him that just yet. All of these things are going to come to the forefront. And then the fear will hit them. So as we see these things unfold, the violence will be increased. And it's going to be to the point to where we will not be able to stomach it. We're going to see clearly that this man is willing to go places where we're not willing to go. In other words, his level of, of violence is beyond our tolerance. We're going to see that. But we chose, we chose this. So now we're gonna to get to see with our own eyes the error of our ways. Now, as it pertains to our people, our men in particular, brothers, you need to take good care of your health. Many of our brothers between the ages of 45 and 55 are suffering from extreme strokes. We're dying because of strokes, high blood pressure, and a whole bunch of other weirdness going on. Most of it is diet related and not taking good care of our health. Ensure that you're following the most highest diet. Stay away from all the things that he says are unclean. There's a reason why the most high has given you a diet. When you buy a car, Clearly, it tells you what type of gas to put in that car that that car may run to its optimum. The Most High has designed these machines that we call bodies. He knows exactly what will make it sick and what will make it work at its optimum. He has given us a chapter, Leviticus chapter 11, 
that we understand clearly what we're not supposed to put into these machines and exactly what we are to put into these machines. I would like to remind the children of Israel like I was speaking earlier in the last few videos. The Most High made the polar bear that he may live in the ice. He doesn't get frostbite. He eats seals. His diet is entirely different from a grizzly bear's diet. They have completely different skill sets. So I'd like the children of Israel to understand clearly that your enemies and you are two totally different beings. Genetically, from top to bottom. What he eats will make you sick. And we have to understand that there is a difference. As we are all the same nonsense, it's not true. The Most High made it plain that we're not all the same. So therefore, we are not allowed to eat what he eats. We're not allowed to do what he does. And when we ever try that, we pay. So look into the most highest dietary law, follow that. Try to get a regular regimen of exercise that you may maintain your health. Not only your physical health is great for your mental health as well. With all of the <clears throat> harassment that we deal with directly and indirectly from the stresses of us seeing our sons shot, I just looked at a video the other day where a cop pulled over brother. The cop went to his, co to his cop car and was looking for a stash of drugs to plant on the brother. You look at these types of things and it makes you angry. However, I understand clearly why these things are happening. And so when you see these things, it saddens you. It mentally wears on you. Like the brother from Runaway Slave says, it's mental, racial battle fatigue. It wears you out. So when you're seeing these things over and over again, and you know them to be true, and they're happening to you, or they're happening to your family members, or you see it happening to your brother across the country, this has a psychological effect on us. It's a wonder that none of that all of us are not completely crazy. So caring for our mental health is extremely important, along with our physical health. If at all possible and you have some insurance that's decent, I would behoove you to ensure you get your medical checkups. These are important. It may be able to stop something before it becomes a a problem, a major problem. However, before we go to the physicians, we must first seek the most high yeah. But the but the most high has his doctor has doctors that can help you. So don't be one of those to where I'm not going to the doctor. Don't be that guy. So take care of your health, both physical health, mental health. Stay sharp. Stay physically ready. At any given time, your enemies may find you to be a victim. And you are to be ready to wear you are not easy prey for them. You're in the lands of your enemies and you are to be mindful of that. So stay mentally sharp, stay physically sharp. Make sure you get your doctor's checkups. That way you're not one of these brothers 40 something years old, dying of stroke. Had a brother I knew that was a pretty hefty brother, had a strong spirit on him and this brother had a stroke. I'm talking about he was a shell of his normal self. And when I spoke to him, his normal aura, his delivery, the way in which he spoke was that of a defeated man. That stroke literally just wore him out. I mean, he wasn't the same person. He wasn't the same person in his physical appearance. And he wasn't the same person when he spoke. He just sounded weak. He looked old. He sounded tired. 
and his words even sounded weary. The brother had passed away now last week, last week. And, you know, it's tough when you know someone and you see them go through these things. And it is possible that some of this could have been avoided. So, men of Israel, make sure you check your health and remember that you are the head of your house and without you, it's a loss for your house, it's a loss for your wife, it's a loss for your children and your grandchildren. There's wisdom that you can pass on to them that's imperative. You need to be here. Don't do anything to allow your enemies to rob your family of you. What do I mean by that? Put down those cigarettes. Put down that alcohol. I'm not telling you this because I'm just telling you this. I don't smoke, never have. Don't drink, never have. And anyone that knows me knows this. Don't deal with drugs, never have. And if you're dealing with that, I'm not around you. When you become involved in these things, you become a liability to your family. These cigarettes will ultimately make you sick. Ultimately, it will kill you, remove you from your family. And all the while, making your enemies rich because we don't own any of these cigarette factories or these cigarette companies. Let this alcohol go. Let these drugs go. Let all of these things go. That you may be healthy, that you may be around your family, that you may be able to provide, that you may be able to protect, and that you may be able to punish them and also give them guidance because you're older and you're wiser and you're sound in your mind. Your mind is not one that's corrupted by drugs, corrupted by alcohol, and therefore your thinking and your decision making is dangerous, reckless, and can benefit no one. In fact, it makes you dangerous. So, man of Israel, be mindful of all of those things. Like I said, put down all of these things that are harmful. You're in a war zone. Put down the cigarettes, put down the drugs, put down the alcohol. Now, let's look at some of the things that we're seeing, that we've seen, we've seen to where uh, old Diddy has been caught up in all manners of debauchery. Now, <clears throat> when we are put in certain positions, we are to take care of ourselves, take care of our families, and to be the best representation of our people that's possible. I've told you before, we have a bad habit of allowing our enemies to be our leaders. We want somebody to lead us and speak on our behalf because they've got some money or because they're just famous, because they can tell a good joke, because they can catch a ball, because they can hit a ball, or because they can run a ball. We're going to have to start making sure that our spokespersons our spokespeople and our leaders are men who are righteous men. We have seen time and time again where the very men that's trying to stand up and try to speak for us are actually unrighteous in all of their ways. And these unrighteous men are the leaders, they are the shepherds that pity us not. Meaning, they will guide us straight to the slaughter for profit. <clears throat> they will stand up in the midst of us and try to assume a leadership role, steering us in a path that they themselves know that ultimately it is dangerous for us. However, if they're able to benefit financially or they can gain some affluence and influence in doing so, they're willing to do it. Many of our men have no commitment to their own people. We are to change that. How can we change that? We are to be mindful how we raise our children and how we deal with our children, period. Children of Israel, the first people that should ever care about them should be men and women of Israel. Because once we fail to do that, then we have young people who have never been cared for, who have never been loved, that raise up and grow up 
to resent their own people because when they were young and when they were vulnerable, no one ever took the time to care for them. In fact, they did them harm in the days of their youth when they were most vulnerable. And when they grow up, they will remember that. They will resent that. And that resentment is shown based on how they deal with those same people when they're grown. So anytime you see a young daughter of Zion, when you see a young man of Israel, if the law is in your heart, then you will certainly understand that this is the apple of the most eyes eye. And you will deal with them with care. You will deal with them with love. You will deal with them in compassion. And when you give them that love, that care and compassion, then they now have love, care and compassion by which they can give to someone else. But if you give them anything other than that, if you give them nothing but hurt, never cared for them, abused them physically, abused them emotionally, abused them sexually or otherwise, never offered a word of encouragement or anything of the sort. If that's what you give them, that's what they will give you when they become grown, when they become stronger, and then they will be enemies unto you. So we ought to be mindful how we treat our youth. Some of these grown men, they're so foul in their ways, they're too far gone. Most High is going to remove them. We can't do anything with them. However, we can change this trajectory with our youth and how we see them and how we view them and how we interact with them. And it's going to take a righteous man to do this because all of these unrighteous brothers that we're seeing, Diddy and the rest of them, these righteous, these unrighteous men learn these unrighteous ways from other unrighteous men. That is why the righteous man in Israel cannot afford to just go sit in a corner and do his righteousness all by himself. It's important that if you understand the situation that we're in, we are to take this light and shine it on everyone that we possibly can. That we may magnify the Most High's law and make it honorable and give glory and honor unto his holy name. That righteousness may be the standard of the day. It's been one hour, Israel, and I want to kind of discuss these things with you as it pertains to Israel. These Israelis, because they're not Israel, they're just white Europeans in the land. That's all. Unrighteous ones are that. They're stating that they may hit Iran. Now, Iran stated clearly, if you hit us, we're going to hit back. So this scenario can play out like this. If they hit Iran and hit Iran's major infrastructure, i.e. their refineries and possibly their nuclear facilities, Iran may just go ahead and let them have it and let it loose. Iran let those arrows go. All the axis of resistance, let those arrows go. All these military bases in the interest of America is ran over. America gets upset, jumps in the fray. All the other Arab nations jump in the fray. The body bags start coming back. The Russians jump in the fray. The Chinese jump in the fray. And the body bags begin to multiply. And now the intercontinental ballistic missiles start to fly. Your oil and gas is through the roof. You don't have to worry about if you're in the manufacturing sector working someplace, you don't have to worry about that because there's no goods moving. Your job is the least of your concerns. The goods that we have access to now, we won't. And if we did, it would be so expensive, you wouldn't be able to afford it. And while all of this is happening, they're looking for somebody to blame. And that blame normally falls square on our shoulders. So what I'm trying to tell you is that this whole situation that we're looking at can change like that. It can be overnight, but it's not overnight if you have been entombed with the most highest law. It's not overnight. You have had years by which to prepare yourself for that which is to come. But there's always going to be a segment of Israel that's going to be scrambling, trying to figure out what's going on. So keep an eye on this situation. 
because this thing can change overnight. And be aware of your sons. If you have sons in their mid-20s and early 30s, if these body bags start coming back in vast numbers, they're going to look to snatch your sons up. You are to be prepared for that. You already know what the end result of them going into this battle would be. So the Most High has raised up the men of Israel to pass this word to the people. And now we are to bear witness to his words. But while we're bearing witness, we are to stay anchored in his law. Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. And peace to the stranger that will take a hold of the Most High's laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts, and do them. Peace, Israel.